What's up lovers of whiskey and watchers of YouTube? I'm the Malt Activist and yes, as you've guessed from the title, we have with us this year's most extravagant expenditure that I have done. I'm of course talking about the art bag <gasps> Hypernova. Are you ready? Let's go. Before we begin, I'd like to give a big shout out to our first time viewers. Thank you for clicking through. If you like whiskey, then this channel is the one for you. Uh, do consider liking, subscribing, sharing, dropping a comment or any one of the above or none of the above. I'm just glad that you're here. Enjoy the video. And to my returning viewers, thank you for hanging around and being so supportive as usual. And of course, a big shout out to my YouTube members and my Patreon gang. Without you, this channel would be nothing. Art bag. Hmm, I know, I know, I get it. I get it. You don't have to tell me. I know exactly what you're going to say. You're gonna be like, there you go, another art bag fanboy going around making super expensive purchases just because he has to follow the cult of art bag and he has no choice. Well, you know what? You're right. There's nothing I can say about that. You're absolutely correct and uh, uh, guilty as charged. Is it because I'm an idiot? Yeah, probably. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, in, it's, it's possible. Uh, I've not discounted that yet. Um, but you know what it is? I, I, I think I can explain it by way of an analogy, okay? Now, I love steak, right? Steak is my most favorite thing in the whole world. So if you were to just give me regular steak, I would eat that regular steak. I like the taste of steak. But let's say you change the seasoning a bit and then you gave it to me again. I'd eat it. I may not like that particular seasoning, but I still like steak. So I'd eat it, but I'd be like, mm, this steak's not as good as the other steaks, but hey, I like steak. You know what I'm saying? Or if you gave me a completely different cut and instead of uh, reverse searing it, you, you decided to smoke it first and, and then give it a sear. And then instead of rosemary, you used thyme. And instead of uh, basting it with butter, you used, uh, I don't know, some sort of cheese on it. I'd eat it, but I'd be like, oh, this is a very different kind of steak. But you know what? I like steak. So that's the only explanation I can give for being an art bag fanboy. And here's the thing, and I'll be very honest with you. Just very early on in my career as a whiskey drinker, um, man, when the Cory Reckon came out, this is like 15 years ago, and the uh, and the and the Oogie came out, I think in 2009 or something, uh, and all these great whiskeys came out, and the art bag 10 came out, and it was just everything was stunning, right? And this was at the start of my whiskey drinking career. And when I drank those whiskeys, I was like, oh my God, this is so good. And I just loved the fact that they were high strength, they were smoky, they were peaty. And there was just something about the, the Artbeck flavors that just, you know, I gravitated to. And so, yeah, I became a fan. And then, and then a few years later, I went down to the distillery for the very first time in my life. Something that I thought I would never do. I live very, very, very far from uh, Isla. So getting there was, you know, two flights, uh, you know, a couple of months of preparation, uh, getting together with a bunch of friends, organizing a, an itinerary, going there. And finally, when I got to the distillery, uh, you know, they say you should never meet your heroes. Well, Artbeg was my hero. But when I got there, it was more than what I could have asked for because not only was it one of the most beautiful, idyllic uh, distilleries on the island, you know, uh, the people, everybody there. That was the first time I experienced um, distillery hospitality, okay? And there are a few distilleries that do it better than Artbeg. And so when I got there and I met Nikki Heads and I met Jackie and I met everybody else and I met Philco and so many other people that are integral to the distillery. They welcomed us with open arms. They really, really appreciated the effort that we had made, you know, to travel so many 
thousands of miles to be with them during the festival, outside the festival, whatever. Uh, they really appreciated the fact that we were there matching their passion for whiskey. And that is something that I can never forget or ignore. And so there was a bond, it created a bond. And my expectations from that distillery uh, went up even higher, right? I was like, oh my God, not only is this one of the greatest uh, whiskeys ever made, the people are so amazing, you know? The distillery itself is so amazing. And, and I fell in love with everything about it. And I'm, by the way, I fall in love very easily, right? I have this thing where I just love romance. Romance is my thing, like, <sighs> I think the only person I'm not romantic with is my wife, but <laughs> but for me, romance is everything. You tell me a story and I'll be hooked. You tell me about illicit stills and smugglers and nighttime uh, distilling of whiskeys, or you tell me little anecdotes about how somebody made uh, uh, you know a difference uh, in the distillery, or you know any. I, I love I love stories. I love romance, and that is what Artbag does the best absolutely the best and you cannot deny it every single one of their um festival releases in the last like seven eight ten years has this quirky funny story around it right the the dark cove was about smugglers coming into the dark cove and and uh, and smuggling away barrels of illicit whiskey and then whisking it away to the mainland to sell Kelpie was about the sea monster that uh, came out at night and he was covered in kelp and that's why it's called Kelpie. Or uh, Ori Verdes uh, was, for some reason, an homage to the Brazilian football team during the World Cup. I mean, okay. Arbe Groove was for, uh, just to, uh, uh, was, uh, was disco. You know, it was all about disco. Artback Groove was all about disco. The Artback Drum was about uh, celebrating everything Caribbean. Man, so they pack stories behind everything. And when you, when you give me the story, you've already won half the battle. Yeah, I've, I've already bought into everything you're selling to me, if that story is fun. And that is what they've done with the Supernova as far as I am concerned, okay? So, A brief history, uh, and I'm sure you already know. Uh, and, and again, for those of you who are not interested in this me rambling on, uh, everything is time stamped, so please feel free to go ahead to the actual review. So, what happened? 2009, uh, Ardbeck came out with their peatiest whiskey ever. Peated at about 100 ppm, called the Supernova. This one was known as the Stellar release. This came out in 2009. Then the following year, they came out with another Supernova, which was kind of peated to the same levels, but at a slightly higher uh, ABV. This one was the 2010 or the SN10, SN2010, SN2010, 2010? Yeah, SN2010. Yeah, SN2010, that's what happened. Then in 2014, I think they mixed up the recipes slightly. They changed up the recipes slightly and came out with a 2014 version. And then in 2015, they said, this is the last of the supernovas. There's never ever going to be another supernova. And they released the 2015 and everybody went crazy. And they said, oh, give us a bottle because there'll never be another supernova again. And cut to four years later, 2019, they released another supernova. Well, it is what it is. Uh, and now we're sitting here with uh, the 2022 bottling of the Supernova series. This one is called the Hypernova. Funny story, I was with Colin Gordon, who's the current distillery manager uh, at the distillery uh, this summer, this last summer. And uh, we were walking around the, the distillery. He was showing us a few things. He showed us uh, the, the, the new distillery uh, or the new area. Uh, that's come up and we we're having a look around and he said well I have something really special planned for the end of the year uh, it's going to be one of our more peated versions our smokiest version but uh, you know I'm not at liberty to tell you what it's going to be and I was standing in the back and I said oh do you mean the hypernova and he looked at me like is there nothing sacred anymore like and uh, I was like yeah man have you heard about have you heard about uh, the uh, the copyright and patent site 
uh, in the US where you have to go and get your labels approved. So people like me, nerds like me, are constantly on that side looking for new Ardbeg labels to see which whiskeys are coming out. So yeah, no secrets in the whiskey world. Sorry, Colin. No matter how hard you try, we will always be one step ahead of you. Mm -hmm. Which brings us to the Hypernova. Now, here you go. What's, what's so special about this? I don't know. I don't know what's so special about this. All I know is that this is um, a non-age statement whiskey, uh, matured primarily in ex-bourbon barrels, uh, bottled at 51% uh, ABV. And the special thing about this is that this malted barley has been peated to 170 ppm. That's right. Parts per million of peat in this malted barley. Now, you have to understand one thing. When we say 170 ppm malted barley, uh, it means that once that barley is smoked and, uh, and dried using peat, it reaches a certain phenolic level. And the phenolic level of the malted barley was 170 ppm. However, during uh, mashing and distillation and ultimate maturation, those ppm uh, levels start to fall. So finally, what we do get in the bottle is way lower than what we get on the malted barley in terms of ppm. Now, here's another interesting thing. This does not use Isla barley. You know why? Because apparently Port Ellen could not peat their malted barley up to 170 ppm. It wasn't possible. So they said, sorry, we can't do it. Fuck off. So these guys, instead of sending Isla barley to the mainland, they said, hey, just peat mainland barley up to 170 ppm and send it over to us and then we'll distill it. Because it didn't make sense for them to send Isla barley all the way, get it peated and then have it sent back. The reason being that it would have, uh, you know, uh, had uh, too much of a large carbon footprint. So they said, just peat it, send it to us and we'll take care of the rest. And so that brings us to the Hypernova. Now I'm going to read what's written at the back. <laughs> this is this is what I love about them right there. The the copywriting is amazing, okay? Transdimensional smoky dram. How can you not fall in love with it? A transdimensional smoky dram. Even the dimensions are trans. No, 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 no. This is just a joke. Please, please don't cancel me. So, possibly the smokiest dram in the world, this one at least. Hypernova possesses a multi-magnitude never before experienced. This is a brutally smoky dram that radiates flavor in every direction. Undoubtedly Ardbeg's smokiest spirit. HN22 is a cataclysmic event for the distillery. It's big, it's intense, and it's pulling palates into a whole new dimension. Explore notes of pungent peat smoke, aniseed, and toasted lavender, while bitter almonds and dark chocolate fuse with curious hints of plasticine and burnt rubber descend into a finish that collapses in on itself before returning to earthy notes of roasted coffee and smoky heather. That's quite, that's quite a detailed uh, tasting note. I like that. That's on the back. On the front it says, uh, propel your palate at full force towards the smokiest dram ever to mature into existence. X at Artbeg. Uh, discover fabric caringly intense notes of tar car and suit. Venture further into the glass and explore ethereal whispers of aniseed, smoke and dark chocolate. Uh, strange that they have uh, different tasting notes on the front when compared to back. Apparently two different copywriters had that job. I wish they had just spoken to each other. Anyway, I have, I have no issues with that. That's fine. Um, but yeah, I mean, 170 ppm, it's not that big a deal, man. Octomore went up to 309, if I'm not mistaken. So, you know, to say that 170 ppm is just unbelievable, it's not really. We've, you know, the I think I think the 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 least peated Octomore was 169, and they didn't make such a big hue and cry about it. So, but these guys do, but and that's why I love them, I guess, because they're like, oh my god, the world's going to end. We, we went up to 170 ppm, oh my god, lord save us. But yes, so here we are, here we are. There 
we go. As you can see, very, 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 quite light, quite sort of light olive, olive color to this. Of course, non-chill filled, no coloring added. Thank you, Artbag. This one is bottled at 51% ABV. Kind of low, I felt, you know. Uh, it's definitely not gas strength. For sure, it's not gas strength. Uh, it seems like it's been watered down to 51%. Uh, I would have thought we could have gone up higher on the ABV, but hey, 51 is what we have. Which, fine, if that's a decision by the distillery to uh, bottle this at 51%. I guess I'm okay with that. There you go. That's what it looks like. It's definitely not blow you away. Have you lost your mind? Are you crazy smoky? But it's definitely, there's a very, very intense beat to it. But it also has the signature art bag distillery style also. The steak. I agree with the fact that it's a pungent smoke. It's quite um, um, pungent. Okay, uh, so uh, the, the peat, the smoke, uh, and the char uh, is there. Uh, there's uh, tar as well. But then you get, uh, but then you get the distillery uh, signature, which is the, the pineapple and the soft lemon. The milk chocolate. I don't get so much dark chocolate. I do get a milk chocolate in here. Very briny, very sea spray, very sea salt. Fishnets. The ones used for fishing, of course. Pervert. Hard boiled sweets. Lemon sweets. Yeah, and hints of black and white pepper. More white than black. So, yeah, so traditional Artbagian flavors with just, you know, amped up peat. That's essentially what this whiskey is. Um, it reminds me of the 10, to be very honest, because, you know, I think very similar maturations. I'm going to even assume similar price ranges. And if you take away, um, mm, not price ranges, age ranges. Uh, so if, uh, but if you just take away the the uh, in the intensity of the peat, then they're very similar drams because I think there's a very similar construction and age. Um, so ultimately, I think what we're paying for is marketing. But hey, let's let's get into that in a bit. Let's drink this and see whether it's worth the fortune I spent on it. Chin chin. <clears throat> okay it's a bit underpowered for me on the palate i do get the aniseed i do get the soft citrus the lemon and the lime and the pineapple the soot the ash the tar is very very strong um i do get the dark chocolate now uh, not so much milk chocolate but more dark chocolate mm, again very salty very briny very sea spray and um, an aromatic spices, sort of kitchen dry, kitchen dry spices, dry spice rub. Yeah, dry spice rub. And yes, but you know, slightly underwhelming on the delivery, on the palate for me, slightly underwhelming. I think I would have wanted a bigger bite, bigger flavors, bolder flavors. I don't get it. Um, it's quite, ah, it's understated on the, no, understated is the wrong word. Hmm. It's a bit, it holds back a lot on the palate. I expected like a massive burst of flavors, um, but I did not get it. It was quite, I felt like it was watered down. I think, I think this is um, underpowered, this whiskey. I think these flavors um, need an extra four or five percent. I think, 
the, I, I think this would have worked perfectly at 55, 56, 57 percent. But I think bringing it down to 51 percent is doing this a disservice. And just for that reason alone, I don't think it's working um, on the palate. It's got a decently uh, long lingering finish. The nose is quite nice. Again, like I said, steak. Uh, but um, the palette doesn't deliver and it's quite sort of underwhelming for me. So, yeah. Mm. So, what do I think? Man, this is tough. This is tough. You know, on one hand, I love, I love the distillery, I love the people, uh, and I want to love everything that comes out of this distillery. However, I did spend 185 pounds per bottle on a non-age statement whiskey, uh, honestly, for two real reasons. One, I have a set. I have the first supernova and the second and the third and the fourth and the fifth, and this one was completing my set. And so that that's why it was really important that I get my hands on it. And secondly, really honestly, I wanted to review it and put it up on the channel. And that's why I was like, okay, it's, it's a worthwhile investment. I'll go ahead and do it. But for people who don't have any of these issues that I have, uh, spending 185 pounds on a non-A statement whiskey is criminal, is absolutely criminal. And I don't think it's fair. I don't see any reason why this whiskey should be 185 pounds. I know there might have been um, uh, additional cost, you know, higher production costs of getting mainland barley, getting it peated up to 170 ppm, what have you, uh, but still not not 185 pounds worth. Uh, and this is directly from the distillery, by the way. So this is not retailers uh, price gouging you, right? So this is a, a price that the distillery has set. I know in my last video, I had this whole uh, ramble uh, rant where I was going, hey man, uh, you know, uh, don't blame the distillery, blame the retailers because they hike up the prices, not the distillery. But in this case, you know, 185 pounds is what the distillery is charging directly, which I think is an exorbitant amount of money for a non-A statement whiskey, which I think is kind of okay, is not bad. Um, uh, but, but when you factor in the price, it becomes a no-no for me, frankly. So, yeah, man, uh, as much as I love Artbag, I think this is, uh, this is a big marketing ploy. Man, I think this whiskey is woefully underpowered. It needed to be 55, 56, 57%, maybe even 58% uh, for the real, like, you know, like, you know, it, it needed to be aggressive and in your face and just, uh, and it's not that, um, it's not a hypernova. It's just, uh, it's just another peated whiskey uh, that doesn't deliver on the palate. And we're ultimately now paying for the romance right so for the people who bought it um yeah i hope you like it man because uh, that's uh, that's 185 pounds that you're not going to get back you know what i'm saying i had a vested interest so i you know i don't really regret it, regret it but you know in hindsight if i just look at it purely from uh buying a bottle for drinking purposes then 185 pounds will get me a lot of other whiskeys that are way better than this one. So, like I said, while I love the romance, while I love the stories, while I love uh, adding to my art bag collection, um, this is not a whiskey worth buying at 185 pounds. This is, the, the regular 10 is a much better whiskey than this and it kind of packs the same flavors. Um, you know, maybe the peat is not that intense, but you know what? Like I said, they're roughly the same age Maybe this is even younger, the, roughly the same construction, you know, good ex-bourbon barrels. Same distillate. I mean, why would I pay an extra 120, 30 pounds or whatever it is for, uh, for this particular bottle, you know? So yeah, that's what I'm gonna, that's where I'm gonna leave it at. Um, this whiskey is not worth 185 pounds and uh, unless you're an absolute art bag fanboy like me, I don't see any reason for you to be buying it. Um, but you know, don't let me dissuade you. Uh, if, if you're curious, then please, yeah, go ahead. But I am not, uh, I'm not happy with this whiskey. And I have to tell you, I am a huge fan of the Supernova series. I think every single one of them is absolutely cracking. But you know what? This one let me down and I'm not a happy camper, especially, especially after I paid 
185 pounds for two bottles. <laughs> That's right, each. 185 pounds each for two bottles I paid. Uh, and so I am not a happy camper. This is um, a slightly below average whiskey for me. So I'm going to give this a 6.5 C. Yeah, 6.5 C. Yeah, that's about right. Which is just about average. And when I spend 185 pounds on a whiskey, I, I deserve more than average. So there you go. There, you know, um, yes, I'm a fanboy, but I'm also a, a truth seeker and a realist. And uh, this is this is how I feel. So, so thank you, thank you for joining me for this uh, whiskey review. I'm the Malt Activist. Until next time, peace.